great. March, March, March has been fucking me over. Hello shoddy bays, hello besties. Welcome to the last day of the month of March. So it's gonna be April. It's not gonna be May. I wasn't gonna say that, not me, not I. Here we go. Let's let's talk about the books that I read in the month of March. I would say March was a very chaotic month, let's say, because most of my reads were misses, I'm not gonna lie. But the ones that were hits, they were hits, you know? But the rest... You know that sound? <laughs> you guys know the one I'm talking about, the one that's like depressing. Anyway, my very first read of the month was The Brightest Light of Sunshine by Lucina Coney. Um, this I bought literally because it said a romance novel and I was like, I'm sold and I knew nothing about it. So <laughs> do with that information what you will. Take everything I'm saying right now with a grain of salt because I knew nothing about this going in. What I remember about this, it's like this guy, Cal, and this girl, Grace, I want to say. Is her name Grace? Gracie? Grace, yes, indeed. Okay, so she's 22 and he's 31 or 30, something like that. And she's in college and he is a tattoo shop owner. She's a ballet instructor also. Um, and he has a baby sister who happens to go to her ballet class. And they meet at a party one day, they become friends, and you kind of get to see Grace giving love another shot because something horrible happened to her in the past and you get to see it here search of trigger warnings there are some dark subjects in this book i did not like this and let me explain why he was a 31 year old or whatever right going to college parties i'm sorry what like frat parties you literally have the connection of the her being a teacher to his sister's ballet thing why could you not have made them meet that way instead like for what for what? You know what I mean? I, I hated that because when a book is an age gap, I do love age gaps, but if it's an age gap, make sure that it makes sense to me. A couple has to have a lot of things in common even if they're not the same age. Like for instance, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. That book is not everybody's cup of tea, okay? But you can't deny that Jordan and Pike don't have a shit ton in common. Like they make sense. To me, they're soulmates. It's my favorite Penelope Douglas book because of that reason. I love them so much and he's so much older than her. Like she's literally 19 and he's 38 or something. It's a bigger age gap than this, but they made sense. The story was amazing. They were soulmates to me and I didn't feel that here. I didn't see them connecting. It kind of just felt like friends to me. I will say the first half of this book was very entertaining. It had me for the first half. I definitely thought it was going to be a book I loved. It reminded me a little bit of Mine Would Be You vibes. If you guys have read that by Kay Gemela. It reminded me of that where like nothing happens, but you're still cheering for the characters. That was the first half, but then the second half completely just took me out of the story because it was, got so boring. Nothing happens to the point that you're like, why the fuck is this 400 pages if you're not gonna let a single thing happen in the story? And their relationship also felt very immature. The third act conflict was annoying. I, it was okay. It was one of those reads that like, if you really want to, go ahead. But to me, it was a little bit of a waste of time. It was a miss, but it was fun. I did have fun in the first half, which is why I rated it three stars. I liked the side characters too. It was very much a, whatever book. Like, am I going to remember this? Probably next week. No. But did I absolutely want to die while reading it? Also no. So three stars, The Brightest Light of Sunshine. I wish I loved it, but I did not. Then I read Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score. I started this last month and I finished it this one. And um, this is a continuation of her Knock Em Out series. So the first one is Things We Never Got Over. I love that book. Rated it five stars. Adore it. This one is about the guy's brother in the first book. So if you read that one, you know Nash. This is his book. It's Nash and Lena. They are neighbors. It's dual POV. He's a police chief and something happens to him in the first book. And now you get to see him going through it in this one. And Lena is new in town and she's there for a reason. And it kind of intertwines with Nash's event. This one was small town neighbors, forced proximity kind of vibe. It didn't really have that many tropes that I can think of at the top of my head. Cause like he wasn't all that grumpy. It wasn't like friends to lovers. It wasn't enemies either. It was just kind of there. It was a little bit of everything. Let me just say that. I didn't like it though at all. So <laughs> listen, I love the first book. I loved it so much and I expected myself to love this, but this was so fucking boring. I could not for the life of me, read more than one page. Like I would read one page, put it down. Read another page, put it down. Read another page, put it down. And I kept doing that throughout the whole month until I just finished it and I rated it two stars. Two stars is being generous. Two stars is me giving it because of the side characters because I love Naomi and I love Knox and I love seeing all of Knock Em Out again. 
and because of the Sloan and Lucian crumbs because they are the third book and they're the ones that I'm anticipating the most. If their book doesn't slay, I will cry. I will fucking cry. But they are the reason why this is two stars, all of those characters. But as for Nash and Lena, they gave nothing. They gave negative nothing. Like they were just so boring, y'all. I did not understand how so little personality could come from these two characters and how this could be quite literally 600 pages with nothing, with nothing. What a waste of my time. I rated it two stars, but the cover is really pretty though. I am glad I own it. <laughs> so there's that. I told you this month is a mess. Then I listened to this next one, Right Man, Right Time by Megan Quinn. Um, I don't own the paperback because I listened to it. And this was one of the very few smart moments I had where I didn't actually buy it before listening to it. I actually just listened to it and then didn't buy it. Would you look at that? Aren't you amazed by me? I'm amazed. What's this about again? Oh, Ollie and Silas, I think. I remember Silas because I was thinking of Stefan Salvatore and Silas and that whole plot in Vampire Diaries. Anyway, Ollie and Silas, and it's Dopey Ovi. She is a college student, she's doing this internship, and then one night she runs into her ex who is dating her nemesis now. And then she's like, don't worry you guys, I'm completely over this relationship. And they're like, are you? And she's like, yeah, I'm with this guy. And she kisses a random guy at the bar. And the guy's Silas, and he's a professional hockey player. Yeah, that's all there is to him, he's a professional hockey player. <laughs> So they start to have a little fake relationship so that she can be off the hook with the nemesis and the ex and then it also helps him out too because he recently got um, out of a relationship and his ex-girlfriend is now working with him so if she thinks that he has a girlfriend it's beneficial to him as well. You have a little fake dating, um, you have a little age gap because he's 10 years older than her, he's a professional hockey player like I said, she's in college. Again the age gap did not make much sense to me, did not love it all that much, she seemed very immature for him. Um, I did not like the characters. I rated this two stars also. <laughs> the characters were not that great. Silas was nice, but I could not tell you a single thing about him besides the fact that he played hockey. And then Ollie was very mean. I, I didn't like that. One thing that can make a book for me just be done is when there's women against women. I don't like women being pit against each other, ever. I do not like that in real life. I do not like that in shows, in movies, in books. It doesn't matter. It literally will bring the book down for me. And it happened here because like it had the catty ex-girlfriend and it had the like crazy uh, nemesis, co-worker, whatever. And I just don't like that at all. So that brought this down. Then Ollie was kind of mean. Silas was whatever. There were some funny moments, but it was also too much. Like it was it was trying so hard too. This is oh I remember I remember what happened in this that pissed me off. Are you ready? Literally they're having a conversation about sex and she was saying how much she loved it and how much her ex-boyfriend did not love it. And she was like, Oh, I I love sucking dick. Excuse me. <laughs> and she's like, My ex-boyfriend didn't like it, but I love it. You do not say that in a conversation. You cannot fucking tell me that you say that normally. Like <laughs> I could not get that out of my head. I was like, how do you just randomly blurt out, I love sucking dick. What the fuck, girl? Shut up. <laughs> I remember it being one of those books that they were trying to make the girl try too hard to be appealing and to be like what a guy would want, which is really not my cup of tea. It felt like it was written by a man. I think that's the best way I can describe it. That's upsetting. Um, Two stars. <laughs> I do like the series, like I like the other books in the series, or at least the uh, only other one I read, those three little words or whatever. I liked that one and I liked seeing the characters again, which is why this is a two star, but that's about it. So that sucks. <laughs> then I read this next one on paper bag and this is going to be really shocking because it's in third person, but it's the Bromance Book Club um, by Lisa K. Adams. This is the first book in the Bromance Book Club series I read. The Christmas one first during Christmas time and everybody told me to go back and read the other ones so I started with this one. It's in third person like I said but I was able to get through it which is actually astonishing. I normally would never but I did so that says something. So this is about Gavin and Thea and I'm pretty sure he's a baseball player? Yeah he's in the major leagues and Thea and Gavin were married and then now she's asking for a divorce. So basically you get into the story when their marriage is already falling apart and when she wants nothing to do with it anymore. They have two kids and Gavin is completely torn apart about this and so he wants to get her back and that's when his friends tell him about the bromance book club which is basically a club of guys that read romance books to learn how to woo their women. I love the premise of that. It had all of the things that I normally would love and yet I didn't love it. <laughs> 
I also didn't hate it. I rated it 3.5 stars. The reason why I rated it 3.5 is simply just because of Gavin and the Bromance Book Club guys. Like all of them were so funny. I loved every single one. I loved Mac. I loved how funny the guys were. I loved the premise of them reading books together. They were hilarious. Them helping Gavin get back with Thea was so fun. But the romance aspect of it just pissed me off because listen I support women's rights and more importantly I support women's wrongs but Thea girl give me a break what the fuck this was basically a whole ass miscommunication and if the couple had just talked this would have never happened and that pisses me off because she just did not try at all like he didn't know what was wrong and she wouldn't tell him and that really annoyed me like there was literally a line in this book that she was like he was like, oh, why didn't you ever tell me that? And she goes, why didn't you know? Why didn't you know? Because he's not a mind reader. What do you mean? How did you not know? She really upset me. Like she just wouldn't tell him what was wrong. She didn't say what needed fixing. She never tried to talk about it. And it's not even like it just like she tried a bunch of times and then all of a sudden she quit. She didn't try at all, ever. She just kept this facade that everything was fine and all of a sudden blew up. And I did not like that at all. I didn't cheer for them. I kind of just wanted them not to be together. It was one of those books that I was like, if you end up not together, that's fine. It was no good to me, but I did have a really fun time with the friend group. That's why it's a three star. Did I say 3.5? I lied, three stars. It's really fun that the light is going out right now as I'm filming. If the light gets weird, that's why. Then I read these next two on my Kindle, but I also have the paperbacks. It's First Down and Breakaway by Grace Riley. This was my very first books by her. I don't know if it's the only book she's ever written, but these were the first ones I read. They're both sports romances. They're both college romances. It's about brothers. So the first one is a football player and the second one is a hockey player. And then you have a third one coming that's gonna be a baseball player. The first one is James and Bex and it's dual POV. And the second one is Cooper and Penny, also dual POV. So first down is basically a quarterback, very popular guy in school, and then a shy, very smart girl who tutors him. So you have a little bit of Naily vibes there. Um, you also have fake dating, which is fun. And then Boy Falls First as well, which is great. And then Breakaway is Coach's Daughter, and then it's a Secret Friends with Benefits, and it's a naughty list, let's call it. She's basically trying to get through this sex list she makes that she wants to accomplish and he starts helping her. That's awesome, we love to see it. Um, and it's also boy obsessed. Did not expect it, but it is. These were so fun. I rated both of them 3.75 stars. They're not like the most amazing books you're ever gonna read, but they're so fun, so quick. I read this one in one night and this one in two. So if that tells you anything, it's like, if you're in a reading slump, these are the books for you. If you want something quick, something fun, something that'll just get you reading, 1000%. I had a blast with these books. I would highly recommend. They were so cute, so fluffy, but also there was a lot of spice too. The brothers are amazing. It's fun to see both of them in each other's books. I'm very excited for the third one. That's the one I'm most excited for. It gave, it really did. This was my first win of the month. I know I rated both of them 3.75, but to me, that's not bad. To me, that's good. It's just like, it didn't change my life, but I still really, really enjoyed it. So highly recommend, yes. The next four I'm not gonna talk too much about because I did an entire reading vlog for them. So you guys already know. If you guys wanna go watch it, go right ahead. I will link it in the description below. But it's these. It's the Bad Rap Duet by Kristen Becker Ritchie. So you have Whatever It Takes First, and then you have Wherever You Are. And then I read the Cat and Mouse Duet by H.D. Carlton, which goes Haunting Adeline and then Hunting Adeline. And I read it all in a spoiler-free reading vlog. So if you wanna go see my reactions and what I thought and all of that, I rated Whatever It Takes 4.25, and then I rated Wherever You Are 4.5 stars. I loved both of these. They are Gillow's books. So if you have read Addicted Calloway, you know Gillow. These are their books. Um, it's a duet. You can read it as a standalone, but I highly don't recommend that because it will not be good. Like, you will literally be like, I don't care. If you don't care about the characters, you're not gonna like this. So you have to read Addicted Calloway for you to get invested and then enjoy this. So that's how I would recommend you doing it. Loved being back in this universe. At the same time, it makes me really fucking sad. So I don't think I'll be reading the Leica series anytime soon. I don't think I'm ready, but 4.25, 4.5. Then we have Haunting and Hunting Adeline. I haven't stopped thinking about this since I finished it. So if that tells you anything, <laughs> um, the first one I rated 3.5, the second one I rated 4. I liked this, but it was a fucking mess. Just know, um, please search up trigger warnings. These books are the heaviest books I've ever read in my entire life, but I was entertained. Um, it basically follows a girl and her stalker. It's dual POV. It's Addie and Zaid. He stalks her and then they fall in love. So <laughs> Joe Goldberg on crack. Second book, like I said, very heavy. It deals with so fucking much. 
please search up trigger warnings and please take them seriously for these books. I don't even really know if I recommend it, but I had such a fun time. So if you're into that kind of stuff, if you're into non-con, if you're into gunplay, if you're into stalker relationship, if you're into any of that, these are for you. If you cannot handle any of that, then these are not for you. So just beware. If it's for you, then you will really like this. It was very entertaining. Even if it's not for me, I still had such a good time reading this and I can't stop thinking about it. The first book definitely didn't like all that much. I rated it 3.5, but the second one won me over. I loved this one. This one was a four. So if you want to know any more, you can watch my reading vlog, but that is all I will say. <laughs> like I said, haven't stopped thinking about it. So is this lighting better? Okay, this lighting is a little bit better. Then I listened to this next one. This one is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. I don't want to tell you much about this one because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's basically three women. You go through their POVs and they find themselves involved with the same man. That is all I will say. You don't know what's going on for the entirety of this book. You only know what's going on for the last 5%. <laughs> It was one of those that you were just like, what the fuck is happening? I did right at the beginning of this book think for a second. I was like, oh, what if? And then I thought of the plot twist and it was what it was. So <laughs> that kind of bored me when I got to it because I was like, oh, okay. And the book for 95% of it, since I didn't know what was happening, I was just extremely not interested. I don't even remember the three women's names, if I'm being honest. I rated this a two star and that's also because I really went into this thinking it was like a romance book and it wasn't in my eyes but in the back it says new rom-com by Beth O'Leary there was nothing rom-com about this in my opinion <laughs> like in my humble opinion I know I didn't write it or anything but it, it's not a rom-com to me since I went into it with those expectations I was very much let down and I didn't have a good time I was bored as hell and the story was just whatever I didn't care for anybody and then you can't make me want to hate someone for the whole book and then make me want to like them at the end that just does not make sense to me yeah this was a miss are we fucking surprised march 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 has been fucking me over and then i read the playlist by morgan elizabeth i read this one on kindle it follows zoe and xander do a pov and it is best friend's brother sister's best friend well obviously that's the same thing it's best friend's brother <laughs> And then it's a road trip, childhood friends to lovers, a little bit spicy, fun, fluffy, that kind of vibe. And the reason why I wanted to read this in the first place is because it is inspired by Taylor Swift. Basically, she keeps this list of things she's always wanted to happen to her. It's like a Taylor Swift inspired list um, of like things that Taylor has sang about before. So like kissing in the rain. So she'll write, I would like to be kissed in the rain, whatever. And then he starts going through the list and making it happen. Fucking iconic, right? The premise chef's kiss i immediately was like i need to read this every chapter starts out like with the title being a taylor swift song are you fucking kidding me are you fucking kidding me the dedication taylor swift related there was taylor swift crumbs everywhere easter eggs everywhere in the best swifty way and for that reason and that reason alone i rated it 3.5 other than that it was a miss for me <laughs> it felt like a lot of the references were a little bit trying too hard which I didn't enjoy I wanted it to be more naturally done like for instance there's a chapter or whatever that he's like oh she wants she wants this to happen this way baby let the games begin and I'm like excuse me nobody would say that <laughs> and I just didn't like how it was like very forced it made me cringe a little which I didn't want um I didn't care about their relationship either like she was very oblivious the entire time to what he was trying to do and it was so obvious which pissed me off like he would say it and she would be like oh my god I just don't know of course you know he just told you and then since I just jumped into the story not knowing anything about it because it's like a series but it can be read as a standalone I feel like I missed a lot too like I missed background on them when I jumped in it kind of felt like the story was already happening without me kind of felt like they were already happening and I wasn't there you know what I mean like the romance felt very quick very fast paced which I didn't enjoy I was in a reading slump when I read it though so I don't know if that did anything but I rated it 3.5 only for Taylor for the Taylor references and the Taylor songs and just that aspect of it I think that the premise was really great but the execution did not hit for me but I did end my month in the most amazing of ways and now when I pull these out you're gonna yell at me I know you're gonna yell at me because you're gonna be like Larissa you have so many books to read what are you doing why are you rereading this and you're right you're right like you're not wrong but also I don't want to hear it I um <laughs> the boys of Tommen series here I am holding it once again. Literally, I just told you guys in a video, like the book tag, I told you guys that this was the series that I reread the most. And here I am rereading it again. I reread this in January, okay? 
quite literally two months ago. Why did I reread it one more time? As if these books are not huge. As if I don't have other things I need to be reading. What was I doing? What was I on? I don't know. But anyway, it's because these two books came out, right? Saving Six and Redeeming Six. And I was like, I'm gonna binge the shit out of that. But first, I have to reread Binding and Keeping 13. <laughs> <laughs> because I miss them so much and I need to remember everything. And so I went and reread this. It's still five stars, nothing has changed. Johnny and Shannon, Dual POV, Search of Trigger Warnings, very heavy. Literally some of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. I would recommend this with every fiber of my being. It's boy obsessed, it's popular guy, shy girl. It's a I will do anything for you type of love. It is everything, everything, literally. I can't recommend this enough. Please fucking read it. And then after you're done with that, go into the next books in the series, which is Saving Six and Redeeming Six. So the order, let me tell you, Binding 13, Keeping 13. This is about one couple, Johnny and Shannon. Um, you have to read one to be able to read the other one or else it won't make sense. So read it in order. And then you have Saving Six and Redeeming Six, which is about a different couple. It is Shannon's brother, Joey, and Aoife. And this one is a childhood love to real life love, childhood friends, to lovers. It's a, it's always been you. He changes everything for her, they're best friends. It gives everything it needs to give and I don't want to spoil anything. But again, Search of Trigger Warnings, another very heavy one. Please read all of these together. You can read just these or just the other ones, but don't because you'll miss so much. And this is a series that I literally just need to take a moment to talk about. Listen, I know I talk about this series a lot, I know, but it's cause after Addict to Calloway, this series is it for me. And that says a lot because I normally don't even talk about another series in the same sentence as Addict to Calloway, but this one deserves it. This one sits right up there with it. It is everything to me. The characters, you get to know them so much, so well, so deeply that you feel like you, you're just there in their lives. You feel like you go to the school with them. And the crumbs that you get for future couples is everything. Like Claire and Gypsy, they don't have books yet but they own a little part of me because of the crumbs you get here and they're gonna get books eventually. And then you also have the mess that is like another little love triangle you have there or a, lo a, love, a love square, cause it's Feely, Katie, Lizzie, and Hugh-y. <laughs> Hugh-y. <laughs> Hugh-y, I think that's how you say all their names. I mispronounce it all the time, mind your business. Anyway, they have a, a whole drama thing going on that you get to see crumbs of throughout the books as well. You get to see like, Johnny and Shannon's story in this one, but then you get to see their story kind of again through Joey and Aoife's POV in these. It's just everything. I promise, I promise. I know that these books look so long and I know that you're very discouraged right now, but if you listen to anything I say ever, let it be to read this series and read Addicted Calloway. That's the only thing I want to be known for. That's the only thing I want to be remembered by. I will die and still be talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Chloe's writing is everything to me. These books make you feel a different type of emotion. I promise that they're worth it. I promise. Please, please, please try it. If you trust me in anything, have it be this. Go read Boys of Tommen. Binding 13, Keeping 13, Saving 6, Redeeming 6. It's not finished yet. It takes you through a roller coaster. Trigger warnings out the wazoo, but there is happy endings at the end of each of like the duets. So like Binding 13 is cliffhanger but then keeping 13 has a happy ending and then saving six cliffhanger but redeeming six happy ending <laughs> but it takes you through a lot but it's worth it okay and then the other characters are getting books so i love it so much i literally just <laughs> please read this i i yes i love you so much i love you chloe i love these characters i love this universe nothing means more to me than this <laughs> And I will continue to reread it every month. I know you're yelling at me, but mind your business. I just spent my entire time talking about that. <laughs> so that is all my beautiful besties. I hope you have such an amazing day. Tell me what you read in March or what you didn't read. Again, I always have to say this, but I want to remind you that it does not matter how much you read, how many books you read. You can read one or you can read 50 and it does not matter, okay? Just remember that everybody has different schedules. You get in a reading slump or you don't. You have things to do or you don't. Like We all read at different paces. We all read different genres, different sizes of books. Just remember that all of that stuff does not matter. Please, please, please. Because I don't want you guys sitting there and comparing yourselves because I know how much that sucks. Um, and sometimes we can't help it, but let's fight it. Let's fight it together, okay? What somebody else is doing is none of your business. It's all good. If they read 50 books, that's cool. That's good for them as they fucking should. They're killing it, girl queens. But if you read two books, you are also killing it, girl queen. A flower is beautiful and amazing, but so is a sunrise. They do not need to be compared, okay? 
remember that. I love you so, so, so much, and I hope you have such a good day.